Hey guys, welcome back to Gear Forward. My name's Paul, and today we're taking a look at the Sofen SC13 EDC light. Now, first of all, this light was provided for review by Sofen. However, they did not provide any financial compensation. They had no input into the outcome of this review, and they did not receive an early copy for review purposes. So let's jump on in with a size comparison. Channel staples, let's get the 58 millimeter classic up here and the 91 millimeter up top. And you can see that the there we are, the 58 is the closest comparison there. Let's get some battery comparisons. Here we have a triple A, oops, stop rolling, a triple A and a double A. And probably a comparison that I think a lot of people probably end up making. This is the Olight Baton 3. I unfortunately don't have the most recent Baton 4 for comparison, but I still think this is a pretty relevant comparison point here. Now, this is using a 18350, so I'll just go ahead and give you a size comparison with the cell itself. So as you can see, it's a very compact light overall, even taking into consideration the length of the battery. And the battery is rechargeable, however, it's rechargeable by the light itself, no onboard thing, so you don't have to unscrew the cap that much. And getting into just the general design of the light, whilst we have this unscrewed here, you can see the depth of the threads is very nice and long. We have an O-ring for water resistance, and it's nice and greased for a smooth turning. Now this is made out of anodized machined aluminium or aluminum, depending where you're from. And I have to say that this is very well machined. The anodization is done very well. This light feels very good in hand. As you can see, we have some jimping that's orientated vertically so that you can un unscrew the light. And then we have some jimping in the other direction to help with grip purposes. We have a TIR or total internal reflection optic. And we also do have a clip here that is optional, but it is quite deep. Go ahead and give you an example of that. So as you can see, it would be sitting pretty deeply in your pocket. Now, this does have USB-C charging built in behind this little flap here. You can see there. And when you plug it in, you do get a charging LED on the front, which turns green when fully charged. As, you, as for what you get inside the box, obviously you get the light itself. And just whilst we're here, this is a 6,000 to 6,500 6, Kelvin light in terms of temperature. You're going to get the manual, as well as a decently long USB-A to USB-C cable and a lanyard. The cable itself is actually feels pretty decent quality. Um, it's not braided or anything like that, but it feels like it would hold up to a good amount of use. And just one last note on the design, this does also feature a magnetic tail cap, which holds the light well enough, and it also has a very small and discreet built-in lanyard hole there, should you wish to carry it with a lanyard. But now getting on into the UI and the modes that this light offers, so this offers a wide range of modes in a very familiar UI. So if we just press and hold, we'll go into the moonlight mode. This is one lumen and will last for 100 hours. I'll press and hold again to cycle through. We'll go into the low, which is 10 lumens, and will last for 17 hours, 36 minutes. Medium comes in at 150 lumens for 3 hours, 30 minutes. High jumps up to 500 for 1 hour, 30 minutes. And then a double click will get us into strobe mode, so strobe warning. And this will kick us up to 1300 lumens for two minutes before stepping down to 500 lumens for another hour and 20 minutes. And double clicking again will get us into the strobe mode. Now this does also offer a digital lockout. So when the light is off, if you just press it three times, you get a flash to acknowledge. And then the light just won't want to come on. Just tap it three more times and then it comes back on. Now, I think, yeah, so you can also just manually turn it out with a partial click. This is generally my preference. Uh, you're breaking the circuit entirely physically, which I think is just a better solution. And it's also just quicker and more intuitive to just fix that no matter what light you're jumping between. Just quick turn and you're back in business. 
So that's a pretty good wide array of different modes. And seeing as this is very pocketable and has an IP68 water resistance, it can actually serve you quite well in a wide variety of different situations. But let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on the good of this light. So this is a very well machined light. The pocket clip is excellent. It does go down very low and you do have the ability to rotate it to whichever you want. Um, as it is in this backwards orientation, you can also mount it onto the brim of a cap should you wish to, to improvise a headlamp, which I have tested out and works very well. Being that it is such a small and light flashlight, it doesn't really put much strain on the front of your head as it hangs from a cap. I think that is very well done. Um, it's incredibly portable because of its size, and I think that the range of brightness and the modes is very well done. Now, I will say that because it has that TIR optic, it is going to give you more out of the lower modes than you might expect, whilst giving you more of a throwy kind of beam than a floody kind of beam, just in my opinion. So let's go ahead and take a look at that moonlight mode. And even though I have some filming lights on here, and this is only meant to be one lumen, you can see we do get a very clear hotspot still underneath the lights, and that is because of that TIR optic. So if we step up, so you can keep, see the beam, you get a defined hotspot in the middle, and then more spill out to the side. This is a pretty good beam for just general use, in my opinion. Um, if you're going to use it as a headlamp all the time, it could perhaps be a little bit more floody, but if you're using it to that extent, then honestly just carry a headlamp. On to what I think that this light could do a little better. Um... Now, I'm not a huge fan of the charging flap. So as you can see here, I've got the clip over the back and that's just the most natural orientation for the clip in my opinion. Um, but it also is protecting the flap from getting pulled up. As you can see, we have this a little bit here. Once you open this up, it is actually a little fiddly to get back in sometimes as you have to seat it and then just make sure that it's all just pushed in and you often get this little sticker pop. This is a very, very minor complaint and is mostly rooted in just that. I'm not a huge fan of flaps covering charging ports to begin with. It's not a deal breaker, but it is limiting like realistically where you can orientate the clip if you want. Very minor thing, but just thought I'd mention it. Something again, as well as worth mentioning is the sheer size of this thing it can be problematic to some people. Uh, my hand size is a little bit of average, I wear a 910 work glove, and this light just completely disappears in my fist, which can make holding it for prolonged periods of time just a little bit fiddly as you're only really getting a two-finger grip. So if you have larger hands, you may want to consider making use of that lanyard. This is not a problem exclusive to this light, it's just the nature of the beast when you get into the smaller light form factors. But it, on the other side of it, you also get a very carryable experience at the same time. So, you know, the trade-off is there. Um, I think this is overall a really solid light. I don't really have much to complain about, to be honest. It's really just the size of the flappy port. Um, I kind of wish that it gave you the option to have the clip the other way, or maybe a reversible clip. But that's just more options. This is a very well done light. And this, to be honest, is a very good example of why it's a very well done light. It gives you a lanyard hole. But if you don't want to use the lanyard hole, you can barely tell it's there most of the time. It's very well integrated into the overall design. This is a very well thought out, very well designed light that is actually very affordable. It comes with the cable, the battery included. And it retails for only $36.99. And if you get it pre-sale on their website, they're actually offering a 30% discount. That is very good value. Um, this is my first time dealing with a sofa and light in any degree. I know that they're considered a value brand. However, the quality is most definitely there. And I am very happy with my first experience with sofa. Um, and it has made me want to try out some of their other lights. Um, honestly, let me know in the comments down below which lights you'd be interested in seeing and which you think I might like. But I can greatly recommend this. Um, there'll be links down in the description below should you want to grab it for yourself. And whilst you're down there, if you don't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, it greatly helps the channel and I appreciate it. And if you'd like to support the channel in a more direct manner, please consider supporting on Patreon or YouTube channel membership to help bring more gear in front of your faces. So that has been the SC13. Thank you again to Sofern for providing this along. However, my mostly overwhelming positive feedback is entirely my own. I just really like this light. So until next time, my name's Paul and I'll see you, yeah you, in the next video.